Hello everyone and welcome to this new Blender tutorial where we're going to see how to model this little play the like chest from scratch. By the end of the video, you'll know how to transform Blender's startup cube into this simple shape thanks to the powers of the array modifier, the curve modifier, and the curve geometries in general. Okay, so in this tutorial, I'm going to discuss a method that I thought of recently while looking for various modeling techniques and that is heavily based on Blender's curve objects. Now, if you're not too familiar with curves, I talked about those in another tutorial on my channel where I discussed how to use them to create pipes easily. In short, they're another way of defining your geometries where instead of having vertices and edges, you have control points and you let the engine auto-compute the curved segments in between them thanks to mathematical functions. And as you might have guessed, curves are great for, well, creating smooth, rounded 3D shapes. Here, the idea will be to use a curve to define the profile curve of our chest, and then various Blender tools to stick planks and metal bands on this reference curve. This will give us a base for final object that is easy to tweak to create a variety of chest shapes. But anyway, for now, let's start easy with a single plank. That's straightforward to do, we just have to use Blender's startup cube, and after tabbing into edit mode, scale it down to get a flat mesh. The next step is to set up a basic curve to define the profile of our chest, and have this plank model be repeated on this curve line to make the body of our object. Ok, so first, let's move this plank away from the origin and create a new object in our scene. Be sure to go to the second menu, the one for curves, and here pick the circle option. If you go into edit mode, you'll notice that this is a bit different from editing a mesh, since we can only manipulate the control points. But if we scale, move or rotate those points, then the segments indeed auto-readjust to keep the lines smooth in between our points. Now let's select the point on the right and press X to delete it. You see that this changes our line interpolation to only take those two vertices into account, and we can then press X again and click on segments to actually remove this line in our curve. Then by rotating the handles on our two extreme points, we can tweak the curvature of our shape and recreate a nice half circle. Finally, still with those two points selected, we'll press E to extrude them and create the vertical bottom part of our chest profile as you'll see more clearly when you rotate this curve 90 degrees around the y-axis to put it back up on its feet. As usual, it can be good to have our bottom points be on the horizontal xy plane, so let's bring everything up, and inside our end panel, make sure that the global z position of those two points is zero. Alright, at this point, we have defined a simple profile for our chest. Now we need to use our plank from before, and slap it on this curve with repeats to make the body of our chest. We can do this fairly easily by combining two Blender modifiers, an Array modifier and a Curve modifier. For the Array modifier, instead of using the default Fixed Count option, we'll switch to Fit Curve and pick our new Bezier Curve object. This way, Blender will auto-compute the number of repeated instances needed to fill this curve with copies of our reference, depending on the sizes of both the curve and the reference object. Also, we need to change the relative offset axis from X to Y. Then, to actually hook these copies to the curve, we're going to add another modifier to our plank object, the curve modifier. Here we'll again pick our curve object, and you see that it's not really working as expected. That's because whenever doing this pairing of tools, you need to be careful about two things. First, your curve and your snapped object, so our plank here, need to have the same origin in global word coordinates in the scene. So let's select our plank and press Alt plus G to bring it back to the origin of the scene at the same location as our curve. Second, we have to make sure that our curve object that we're using in the modifier is closed. Meaning that, for now, it's this open part at the bottom that is creating a bug for us, and so we should reselect the bottom points and press F to create a segment between them. You notice that our repeated planks have indeed moved a bit, even if it's not yet what we want. Ok, so now to fix our planks wrapping around this curve, 
we need to go to our modifier and play around with the deform axis option. To be honest, I hardly ever find the right one right out the gate, so I'll just go through the list until I get the one that I want. In this case, that's the minus Y axis. You see that our planks are now properly stuck on a curve, as if we'd wrapped our Bezier object with these repeated flat meshes. Also, the cool thing is that all of this is dynamic, so we can rescale our base plank and change the relative offset value to adjust the planks as we want on our curve and add a bit of spacing, for example. Though, for now, our bottom face isn't perfect, because it's not flat but a bit curvy, which is weird here. So let's ensure that the bottom segment in our profile curve is really a straight line. To do this, we can select our two points and press V to bring up the Handle Type menu and choose a vector. This way, our two control points use straight handles, and so we get a flat edge. Also, note that if your planks don't fit well at the end of the curve, you can play around with the size or the spacing to improve the visuals. But in any case, there we go. We now have a simple chest shape with a set of planks that follow our busy curve and so we can super easily change the curvature of our object just by moving around our curve's control points. Ok, to continue with the base shape of our chest, let's see how to add the metal bands in the middle and on each side. This will again be based on our profile curve. So first, let's copy our curve, except that we're not going to do the usual Shift plus D shortcut, but instead Alt plus D. This creates a linked copy that shares the same geometry data as the initial object, meaning that even if we have two separate objects in our hierarchy, each with their own transform, they have the same curve data behind the scenes, and so we can move our copy to one side of the chest, but then if we modify a point in our middle curve, you see that the second curve changes in the same way. Now to turn this simple curve path into an actual visual, we're going to play around with the curve settings in the bottom right panel of the screen, so in the curve data editor, and more precisely the options in the geometry section. Let's start with the bevel. If we increase this depth value, you see that we get a sort of round pipe based on a curve. Then if we go to the profile tab, we can change the roundness to make something more flat like actual metal bands. To do this, we'll add another point in the graph, set the interpolation to be straight lines with this icon, and move our point to the top right corner. And here we are, we now have a flat face ribbon wrapping around our basic curve, and we can of course duplicate this object, still with Alt plus D, to place another one at the other end of the chest. Then to further improve the relative positioning of these bands with the body of the chest, we can also play around with the offset and the extrude parameters of our curve, which of course apply to all three busy objects at the same time, since we've linked our copies. Finally, I'd like to fix two things about the side metal chunks. One, there's this weird corner at the bottom, and two, because there is no geometry inside the curve to fill it, we see the inside of our chest. That doesn't look that good. So to solve both those issues, we'll first change our curve type from 3D to 2D. You see that this fixes the corner problem, and then we can use the Fill Mode option and turn it to Front, for example. Of course, this means that our fill will only happen on one side, and so typically it won't be in the right direction at the other extremity of our chest. So we can either switch the fill mode to both, or rotate our metal band 180 degrees around the vertical axis to get it back in the right direction. Ok, so this is starting to resemble a simple chest. For now, the shape is still quite basic, but if I go into a rendered view and put some materials on my object, you see that we're beginning to have something interesting. And best of all, because everything is based on this initial Bezier curve, we can still tweak the curvature of our chest very easily, and everything updates all at once. But now, from this point on, we're going to add some extra details that don't use our base curve, and so they won't auto-adjust, and also we're going to bake some of those modifiers. So if you want to keep these base templates somewhere, to make other variations later on, you might want to save it or duplicate it in your scene. But anyway, 
First of all, let's start easy and create other metal bands to keep those planks together horizontally, at the bottom of the chest. We'll once again use a circle curve, except that we'll make the handles of vector type and rotate the whole thing 45 degrees to create an axis aligned square. Then we'll scale it to fit the size of our chest and redo the same as before with its geometry parameters to actually create a flat metal band along this path. So I'm going to extrude it and give it a square profile. Then we can duplicate this object with a real Shift plus D shortcut this time to create a non-linked copy and create another horizontal band in the middle of our chest where the lid closes that is slightly thinner. Okay, now I'm going to remove this metal band in the middle. To do this, I need to actually break the link between the middle Bezier curve and the copies on each side, otherwise my geometry changes will apply to all three curves. I can do that in my bottom right panel by going to the curve name at the top and clicking on this 3 button. This indicates that my data is currently used by three objects, but after I click, you see that my curve data name changes because I've just created a new one based on my current shape and the number disappeared because this piece of data is used only by this object. And so now if I transform my curve, either by moving the control points or by changing the geometry options, these modifications don't transfer to my other curves. In particular, this means that I can bring the bevel depth back to zero and I still have my metal bands on the sides. Another important element to have in the chest is a lock in the middle. We can create one using a simple cube that we scale down to the right size and then bevel it using Blender's bevel modifier to better fit the rest of our cute vibe. And also we can use Ctrl plus R to create loop cuts and have more geometry to work with. Typically we should model a simple keyhole in the middle and after extruding it, a good way to further enhance the contrast and make it look like a real hole is to give it a dark or even black color. We can do that by creating a second material slot in our object, picking some dark material in this second slot, and finally assigning it to our selected keyhole faces. Also, since we're going to need to play around to our planks quite soon, we should actually apply our modifiers to bake this plank wrapping by selecting our planks, hovering the modifiers in the bottom panel, and pressing Ctrl plus A. Then, if you want, you can separate the middle curve in two parts, one for the lid and one for the bottom part, and set some extrudes, bevels or offsets on just the top part. But now, of course, the last thing that we really need to take care of is those chest sides. Cause for now, it looks really strange to just have those big flat metal plates. So let's press X to delete this second metal chunk and instead work on just this one. And we'll use a mirror modifier to instantly create the other side of the chest. Okay, now to make modeling the side part easier, we should convert our curve to a mesh. Cause now that we have our base shape, the tooling will be more straightforward if we're working in the usual mesh based workflow. To do this, we just have to select our curve object, go to the object menu at the top and use the convert mesh option. If we tap into edit mode, we see that we're now back with the vertices and edges mechanics that we used to. Then we're going to set up the mirror modifier to auto create the other side. Now, because we want the mirror to be relative to the central plane, we first need to move the origin of our side part to this center location. So let's select it, go to the object menu, and use the set origin, origin to 3D cursor option. You see that we have our origin in the middle, and if we apply a mirror modifier that reflects based on the z-axis, we indeed get a copy of our object on the other side of the chest. Now let's select those auto-generated faces, delete them with X, and instead create just a single face that will be easier to insert, which we can do by pressing I. Then we'll extrude this inserted face by pressing E, and bring it inwards, just in front of our horizontal planks. To get a better shading of our object, we should also ensure that we're shading it smooth but with auto normals enabled, so that these hard lines remain flat and crisp. 
Next up, we need to get back a single plank, so that we can fill up our sides. You can of course use a default cube and scale it down like before, or you can just duplicate the planks that we already have, select this bottom plank by pressing L, and then press Ctrl plus I to invert the selection and X to delete all the other elements. Now if we bring this plank to our chest side chunk and then select our metal part, we can press Ctrl plus J to join them together and still keep the modifier active, meaning that our plank will be copied back on the other side as well. When you do this, be sure to select the plank first and the side object with the mirror modifier second. And so now it's just a matter of going into edit mode, copying this plank and scaling it down as need be to fill up our side shape. And that's it! We now have a basic and cute minimalistic chest. Of course, if you want, you can add even more uniqueness by adding extra details, like round chain-like handles on the sides with an extra torus mesh in the middle of the side part. But other than that, that's already a good amount of concepts for today's tutorial, and we have a nice chest that you can even create variations of just by changing its colors, or by moving a bit the metal bands on the side and creating this other kind of chest model. But anyway, there you go! You now know how to transform Blender's startup cube into a simple cute chest. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that you learned a few things. If you did, feel free to like the video and subscribe to the channel to not miss the next ones. And of course, if you have other ideas of cool Blender tricks that you'd like to learn, tell me in the comments. As usual, thanks a lot for watching, and take care.